Hi guys, John Mark here with Catalyst Connect. This video is going to be a quick overview on how to approach setting up Zoho CRM. It can be fairly daunting when uh, undertaking this task of uh, customizing Zoho CRM to meet your business's needs, especially with a product that is as feature rich and robust as Zoho CRM. There are likely many features and uh, functions that you are not going to use out of the box. So this video is going to focus on explaining uh, what those modules and features may be and whether you should uh, consider using them or not. So the first thing that you'll notice when you log into your newly created Zoho CRM is that you're going to have a number of modules up at the top. Modules are basically tables within the CRM database that help you organize and segment your different business functions. So the first one here is Sales Inbox. Uh, honestly, this is a great tool if you want to prioritize your emails by leads versus prospects versus customers, but most folks tend to prefer using Outlook or Gmail. So I would go ahead and uh, disable that if that's not gonna be your primary uh, inbox. We then have our Leads module, which leads are basically the bucket of uh, potential customers that may or may not be interested in your product or service. Um, these are folks that you're generally going to market to, whether it's cold calling, email campaigns, uh, mailers, and once you have someone put their hand up, so to speak, to express interest in engaging with a sales representative, at that point you're generally going to convert that lead into an account, which is the company, contact, which is the person, and an opportunity, which is the deal that you are trying to win with that entity. So just uh, to keep in mind, the word opportunity, deal, and potential are generally used synonymously in uh, various CRMs. So in the case of a B2C uh, uh, company, you may not have a need for accounts. Uh, there are a couple of ways to approach this, and it really just depends on what the nature of your uh, business relationship is with that consumer. In some cases, you may want to create an account called uh, that family name's household, and then you have the husband and wife as contacts belonging to the household account. In other cases, if you're really just dealing with a single individual, it may not make sense to have the accounts module at all and simply use contacts. Uh, going down the list here, we have uh, reports, which are the basic CRM reports. If you're setting the system up for uh, a fairly robust business, you will likely use the advanced reporting functionality out of Zoho reports itself, not the reports out of the CRM. Dashboards allow you to build um, graphical representations of your uh, reports, and uh, dashboards can only be built off of summary reports, which we'll get into uh, in detail in our video going over reporting. <clears throat> we then have the Google AdWords module. If you're running Google AdWords, you can actually track your AdWords campaigns and efficacy here in the CRM. We have our visits, which integrates with Sales IQ to track visitor activity on your website and actually link that visit activity to known leads, contacts, or accounts in your CRM. Activities is where you're going to uh, keep track of all of your tasks, calls, um, and uh, uh, follow-up calls that need to be made. The vendor module is for just that, tracking vendors. These are generally uh, entities that you are purchasing services from. Keep in mind that the vendor module is used for the company name and you will use the contacts um, for the actual people that you're working with and you would relate the contacts to the vendor. Documents, this is just light document management within the CRM. Ultimately, you'll most likely use Zoho Docs or Google Drive, OneDrive, uh, depending on your ecosystem you've set up. Um, this is a custom module, which we'll touch on in a second, but you can actually create custom tables within Zoho to uh, help match uh, the, the software to your unique uh, business workflows. The forecast module is very powerful. This actually allows you to get an idea of what kind of business you'll earn down the line, and it's based off of the opportunities or deals module. So in order to use forecasts, you must have the opportunity or deals module set up and used appropriately in order to get that functionality. This once again is another custom module that we've configured for illustration purposes. Uh, the product module 
um, the, uh, there, there are a few different ways that you can go about uh, tracking all of your products, inventory management, uh, doing your quotes, sales orders, etc. And this is where it can get a little bit confusing in navigating uh, Zoho's entire suite of apps because there tends to be a fair amount of overlap in the functionality between uh, a lot of the products. And depending on uh, your particular use case, it may or may not make sense for you to use the whole separate product, for instance, for inventory management, when you may be able to get away with it in the CRM. And uh, it can get a little bit confusing, but we always here to help uh, you make those decisions between which uh, products you should be using. So the products module is where you're going to uh, put in all of your uh, products. Price books are unique pricing structures for those products for each of your accounts. So if you give preferred customers discounts on select products, you'll be able to have that pricing structure saved here in price books so you don't have to track it in Excel anymore. Looks like I skipped over cases and solutions. These go hand in hand. Cases are just that. If a support ticket comes up or a problem, you can log a case and relate that case to an account contact uh, and or opportunity. Um, generally, you may have some canned solutions to known cases. So this can help you document what those solutions are. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, companies end up using Zoho One or CRM Plus, in which case you get access to Zoho Desk, uh, which means that you won't really use the cases and solutions module. You'll end up using Zoho Desk, which is a robust uh, support product. The quotes module is used to generate quotes. Uh, from a quote, you'd convert that into a sales order and then a sales order into an invoice. Of course, you can create purchase orders, which are related to vendors. So the way that this is generally architected is that you would begin with an opportunity, which is the major uh, business transaction that you're trying to win. And uh, off of that opportunity, you may start generating multiple quotes that are delivered to the client. They may accept or reject quotes. You have some back and forth on customizing those quotes to meet their needs. Once they've decided that they like the quote that they've received, uh, you'll then convert that into a sales order. Sales orders can be sent through to fulfillment to actually deliver that uh, uh, order to the customer. And then an invoice is routed to your accounting department to actually bill the client. Now, a lot of times uh, companies end up using their own proposal software and don't have a need for tracking quotes, sales orders, and uh, invoices because they may invoice directly out of QuickBooks or directly out of Zoho Books, which uh, we'll get into in another video of how you can actually connect Zoho Books to CRM and based off of closed opportunities or uh, accepted quotes, you can automatically create and send invoices through Zoho Books, uh, which is generally our recommendation. It makes for a very smooth and uh, connected system. Uh, the social uh, tab that's used for managing your social profiles. Again, if you're using Zoho One or CRM Plus, you'll have access to Zoho Social, which is a far more robust social media management platform that uh, allows you to post to multiple social profiles. You can uh, track uh, your user engagement and actually see what activity your uh, known leads and contacts are having with you out in the social world. Uh, projects is a tab that allows you to gain insight into the status of your projects through Zoho Projects. So any kind of uh, project management that you need to do in the system is generally going to uh, be done in Zoho Projects, although oftentimes we end up helping customers actually do their project management within a custom module in the CRM instead of using Zoho Projects. Uh, if you've had the opportunity to take a look at the Zoho Projects, it's a very powerful tool, but can be a little bit uh, of an overkill in many uh, light project management uh, use cases. So in, in those uh, situations, building out a custom module in the CRM to help track your uh, project milestones and tasks can be uh, very effective. <clears throat> Down here at the bottom, you'll see that we have the ability to create a new module. Uh, 
in almost every uh, client that we work with, we end up creating new custom modules to uh, track unique functions for that particular business. Um, so uh, uh, now that we've done a quick overview, I wanna show you how you can strip away the modules that you don't need. You're gonna go here to the setup screen under the customization section for fields and modules. You are going to click on the tab, organize modules. From here, you can simply hide the modules that aren't gonna be in use. Now, if you're a first time user just starting to get engaged with uh, Zoho, what I would recommend is that you uh, strip out sales inbox, uh, Google AdWords. We can leave visits, that can be helpful and it's not gonna be too cumbersome with your navigation. We'll leave activities, vendors, documents. As I said, you'll likely use Google Drive, OneDrive or Zoho Docs. Um, we'll strip out the custom modules that we created, forecasts, cases, solutions. Uh, products, oftentimes, uh, at least for getting started with CRM, you may not want to uh, try to translate or, or move your entire business operations into Zoho. So for now, what I'd recommend is, is just getting rid of uh, everything other than what you would use to track your leads, uh, converting those leads into contacts and accounts and creating the known opportunities and tracking the deals through the various stages. That's your core CRM functionality. From there, you can start to branch out and incorporate your whole coding, sales orders and invoice process, perhaps connecting to external accounting systems, et cetera. But the, the, the core functionality of getting CRM going, um, you, you really just need uh, some of these core modules. I forgot to review feeds. Uh, feeds allows you to essentially keep a uh, track of all of your accounts that you associated with. So. Uh, it acts almost like a social media feed where you can at mention uh, colleagues and they can get a notification in their feed if there's something going on on an account that they may be involved with. So if you're part of a larger team that is all collaborating on a client, uh, the feeds feature can be very useful. Campaigns is for tracking your uh, email marketing campaigns and some other campaigns, although uh, we have a few better ways to track uh, non-email campaigns. Um, this gives you a summary of the email campaigns that you had sent through the email marketing uh, solution um, of Zoho's called Zoho Campaigns. So now that we've stripped away uh, a lot of the tabs that we don't need, you're really just left with your uh, core leads, contacts, accounts, opportunities, and some of the reports and your website and social interactions with those people. From here, you would likely need to uh, customize your uh, lead statuses and your opportunities and the sales stages that uh, uh, you walk your clients through. So to begin with, let's go through to the lead module. And what you're going to do here is go down to the lead statuses you can start to bucket your leads into various statuses um, over here. Now, the way to, to approach this is, again, this is generally uh, folks that have not engaged with a sales rep yet, or they're not uh, actively buying yet. So generally, it's going to be a status like a new lead or not contacted. Then you're going to attempt to contact them. You may have a status of, of contacted, but... I generally don't like to have stages or statuses that just allow that person to sit there. Every status should uh, allude to an action that needs to be performed. And if you've contacted them, well then, so what? Well, what does that mean next? Um, so you can, you can certainly use that as a bucket, but then you need to be good about scheduling follow-up tasks so that you can get them into an actionable state. We either wanna qualify them and sell them something, or put them on a nurture campaign or mark them as dead so they don't clutter up our pipeline. Um, so this is where you can customize your different uh, lead statuses. And uh, once you have them engaged and ready to uh, go into the sales cycle, at that point, you're going to convert that lead into, again, an account contact and you'll create an opportunity. 
And the opportunity is really where you're going to do the granular tracking of your sales stages. So if we go into the opportunities module, go to the stages field and click on stage probability mapping, this is where you can customize those sales stages. So it may start, and, and again, every business is different, but perhaps you start with meeting schedules uh, or qualification stage. From there, most businesses need to do some sort of needs analysis or value proposition in matching their products or services to that customer's pain point. Um, you can associate different probabilities. This is the probability that you're going to win that opportunity at that given stage. So this will take some refinement over time to really understand what your close rate is by stage, but it becomes very helpful in creating your forecasting because every opportunity has an associated closing date or the date that you think you're gonna win that business and um, a value attributed to that opportunity. So the stage probability multiplied by the amount given a closing date can then give us a forecast of how much revenue we can expect in a future month. So once again, you can go through and customize your various stages. The uh, stages that are in an open state mean that they're going to affect the uh, pipeline. Um, when you have a contract that you've won uh, or lost, you'd mark that as close one, close lost and you would include it in the pipeline um, and the forecast as a closed uh, revenue or omitted if it's lost. Now that's gonna be the basic uh, flow of getting folks into the system, qualifying them, as soon as they put their hand up, you convert them, you then track them through the various sales stages in the opportunities and then once they closed, you can um, then go ahead and mark the account as a customer. So generally when you're converting a lead into an account, you'd have an account type as prospect. And then once you've closed at least one deal with them, you'd mark that account as either a customer or a client. Um, if you have an ongoing relationship with your uh, customers or clients, you may wanna have an additional contact type of uh, past client if they choose not to do business with you, as you'll likely use that information to market to them uh, in a different way. Um, that kind of uh, perfectly segues through to email marketing, and, and this is where we'll uh, likely drop off on this video and pick up uh, with how CRM can connect with some of the other sales and marketing products that Zoho offers. In particular, uh, we have Zoho campaigns for the email marketing, and with that product, you can actually sync all of your leads and contacts and their given states or uh, statuses with uh, campaigns and put them on an automated series of emails uh, to either nurture or cross-sell or support their uh, uh, interest in, in dealings with your company. You then also have Sales IQ, which is the live website monitoring, uh, which uh, has live chat as well. So we can integrate any interactions that they have on their website with their CRM profiles. And generally those are gonna be the first three products that you'll implement on the sales and marketing side out of the Zoho product suite. But we certainly look forward to helping you customize and get Zoho set up for your firm. Please feel free to reach out for a free consultation and we'll be happy to help. Thank you.